Welcome to Thinking Particle 6 Subscription Drop 1, a free upgrade for all Thinking Particle 6 subscription users. In this video, we will discuss how to create this kind of effects. What you see here are splines attached to another spline. These multiple splines are attached to a ring. And we will show you how to accurately position splines on splines in a fully procedural way. Before we do this, have just a look how we did this scene. So we are going to deactivate the mesh display and just show our particles. This will show you how the scene was done. So every spline is made out of several particles. And all these particles are linked to each other and simulate a spline. By using particles to create such kind of effects, we gain all the power we need all the freedom and flexibility to create amazing special effects. For now, let me turn back to the mesh display and let's talk a little bit about how we did this effect. So we position splines. Each of these splines you can see here, we position it along another spline that is set to random mode. That's the new functionality we have added that gives you full control along a spline or any spline. Have a look how we create the scene. First thing we are doing is create our seed particles. That's our particles we want to use to align our splines. So we are creating a bunch of particles, 100 particles here. We feed in the float value into the count and that gives us 100 particles. Well, also what we do is we assign a value between zero and one for the particles. So every time a particle is created, we count from zero to one. And this value is stored along with the particle in a data channel. We'll explain in a second why we use that. Next step is we want to create our splines. What we do is our seed particles are used to create the splines. An iterator is used to create an amount of particles to form the spline. And this value could be between 20 and 30. Usually you would just have the count here. However, we feed in a random value into the count input between 20 and 30. This will give us a variation in the length of the spline as you can see here, which adds a nice touch to it. All the other calculations are just done to create the spline itself. So we use the spline create and for each spline we create we add these uh, 20 to 30 particles to uh, define the length of the spline. And here is our new feature, new functionality. We can feed in a relative position on the spline, that's our circle. Remember this is a relative position, zero means the start of the spline, one means the end of the spline. So we set the start and end of the spline and we adjust our positions of the seed particles along the circle. We also can now access the world tangent of our object, the spline, the circle. And we do some simple math, vector math, to get the alignment and direction of the particles on the spline. The next thing is pretty easy and simple and straightforward. It adds a force effect to the splines only. And with this setup, we are doing a little bit of the magic. We are attaching the splines to our seed particle. So the first knot of our spline or the beginning of our uh, spline bands hanging on the circle, they are attached to the seed particle. So whenever the seed particle moves, the spline moves as well. And um, what we're doing here is also we're setting a mass for the first spline so that it stays attached and does not fly off through a physics simulation. The next step is uh, putting some parameters to the spline pool and doing the physics simulation on its own. That's actually how the whole setup works out and 
it shows you the new power you get just with this addition we have done to the shape operator. Just by accessing the position on a spline, you can create now amazing special effects. You have full control and everything is procedural. You can increase the amount of particles, you can control the position, Everything is possible now with just the addition of these important inputs and outputs of this operator. And keep in mind, we have other videos as well that explain new features we have added to Subscription Drop 1. For now, I would say thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more about Thinking Particles Subscription Drop 1, visit our webpage and I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's have a last look at our effect here and remember this effect plays in real time.